Hey everyone, I am Sanket Singh. I'm working as a software engineer at Google and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in this video, we are going to discuss about a very interesting topic. So all of you guys know that I've been working as a full-time software engineer for like almost more than one and a half years now. And prior to that, I uh, did a lot of internships, participated in a lot of open source programs and all. So in this video, I'm going to tell you about how uh, you guys can also start learning backend development. What are the major caveats that you need to uh, learn about in backend development? How you should learn backend development? And I'm going to list a lot of topics that are, I, I believe, essential for a successful backend developer, at least in your initial stages of your career, uh, whether you want to do some internships, some freelance work, some open source work, anything that you would like to do, these are going to help you a lot. So without any further delay, let's just start the video. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing to the channel because we come and bring you a lot, a lot of awesome content on this channel. And also if you like this video, do consider liking the video and share it with your friends so that we can reach to much more mass audience. And without any further delay, let's just start. So first of all, guys, you need to learn about the fact that what is the primary role of a backend developer? So in a backend developer, there are a lot of websites, there are a lot of applications that you guys use, right? Starting from websites like IRCTC, that's a railway booking application, to Book My Show, which is a movie booking application, to Zomato, which is a restaurant and dining booking, lots of applications are there. There are a lot of gaming applications, there are search engines. So a lot of applications you use in your day-to-day -day life, right? And some of them you use on the website, some of them you use on the mobile apps. And when I say mobile app, then there can be an Android app, there can be an iOS app. So all of these, all of these things that you see are the front end part of an application. That is something where user interacts with, right? A user is going to interact only with the front end. But there is a big part which involves a lot of business logic that users don't know. It's an abstracted part and users are not aware about it. And this contains the major business logic. This is the main backend of the application. So as a backend developer, your primary task is to build the business logic, build a whole backend that is scalable enough for handling the request of a much larger audience. And you need to develop uh, all the required, I would say services that are going to power up the application, which is going to be served on the front end, right? So this is the like, I would say in a nutshell, a major role of a backend developer. Now, how you should start uh, if you want to learn and become a backend developer. So first of all, you need to learn the basics. You need to learn about the fact how the internet works. Right, because like, just think about it. Uber is having their web app also. Uber is having their mobile app also. Now, all of these applications of Uber are connected, right? There are a uh, front end that is connected to a single backend, right? So first of all, and then there are users, there are drivers, there are like multiple, uh, I would say users and multiple roles are there who can do different things on the application. So first of all, you need to understand the fact that how everyone is connected. You need to first understand how the internet works. Like you need to ask yourself some basic questions. Like what happens when you write www.google.com? What actually happens behind the picture apart from just loading the google.com? So when you will dig into this topic, when you will dig into the fact that how exactly internet works, then you will be able to realize the fact that there are a lot of things that is based on computer networks. So computer networks is going to be a very foundation of backend development that you're going to learn, right? So from here, your basic journey will start. You need to learn about what are basic requests because uh, when you type www.google.com on the browser, you make a request. You need to learn about what is a request. Then what are the different types of requests? Because sometimes you are able to load a page. Sometimes you are able to load a file, right? Sometimes you are able to load mails. So there are different, I would say, type of requests that you need to make. So you need to learn about the type of requests. And when you will be starting learning about the type of request, then you will understand that there is a term called HTTP, that is Hypertext Transfer Protocol. This is going to lie the first foundation of your overall web development and backend development. Learn about what is HTTP, right? Then learn how exactly HTTP works. So if you want to see, I would say a working demonstration, then what you can do, you can just open the console uh, of your browser and go to the network tab and reload your web app. And you'll be able to see a dialog box, which will be having your HTTP request. It will be having all the data regarding the HTTP request. So generally in an HTTP request, there is an HTTP header, there are HTTP codes involved, there is a, the URL, there is a response, there is a request object. In the header, there are some extra informations. So a lot of things are there. So you can see this dialog box and get, an, uh, get a feel around what exactly is an HTTP request. Then you need to learn about what exactly the code of HTTP represents. So you can go to the MDN website and learn about all the HTTP codes. Now, 
as soon as you will learn more more things around http you will be able to realize okay how exactly systems are connecting over the internet right this should be your first thing now up after that after that you need to keep one thing in your mind and just keep this thing abstract that you don't need to concern yourself that how exactly browser is showing something you don't need to learn anything how browser is working right that means you don't need to interact with the major front end you can simply skip that part and think about the fact that what happens just after the browser right when the uh, when a request leaves the browser what happens then is something that you are going to handle right so this is i would say is going to be the first step that you should uh, learn before making any step further in backend development before moving forward i would like to thank the sponsor of this video that is relevel so relevel is a platform where you can get your dream job based on your skills and nobody is going to judge you based on your college So you know that the only way to excel in this job market is to skill up and keep on improving on your skills from there on. So Relevel has already been changing lives for months now by becoming India's first hiring platform that empowers job seekers to showcase their skills through tests and get their dream job within 15 days. And now Relevel has launched its very own learning product as well where if you are learning to start your career as a software developer or just pick up the necessary skill this product is for you. you have multiple tracks in front end and back end development and you are going to learn a lot of skills from industry ready experts this tra these tracks will include 300 plus hours of learning hackathon like coding contest one to one mentoring soft skills and preparation merit based scholarships relevel social nights etc you will learn the theory from the veteran developers and then get a get a chance to pick up required soft skills to navigate the industry from the leaders themselves So what are you waiting for head over to the product link and start your journey to transform your career forever So the next part that you need to learn about the fact that how exactly the web architecture works you need to learn about the fact that how exactly the client server model works as soon as you are able to understand that okay there is a client they interact with the server the server is having a lot of services and they execute some business logic and return some responses you need to learn about what is a request what is a response as soon as you are comfortable with this one you need to learn about rest right so there are a lot of conventions that are recommended while developing applications these convention include conventions like so convention like rest grpc etc right so rest is something that is going to be used in a much more wider amount of companies and startups most of the companies and startup use rest conventions so start learning about rest keep one thing in your mind that rests are rest is a convention and i would say it's a suggestion people definitely can change the things uh, uh, like based on their application and needs but rest architectures rest conventions are something that is widely used in the industry so this is something that you need to uh, start learning about that how exactly uh, the rest convention works as soon as you dig you will dig deeper into the rest convention you will be able to realize the fact that every url that you will you see on the internet has a certain set of patterns there is that certain set of convention how the urls are built then you will be able to realize about the request type that okay there is a get request there is a post request there is a delete request put request patch request all learn about these different type of request why exactly one makes a certain type of request this is a very important and crucial part of the rest convention so these all things you need to learn i'll drop some good articles about the basics of rest convention you can definitely start reading and learn more about the uh, i would say rest convention and the basic web architecture on your own from these articles now as soon as you are comfortable with this basic of how internet works and how the web architecture along with rest works now is the time to get your hands dirty now you need to pick one certain tech stack using which you can build your backend now backend can be built in anything you can use a ruby based stack which is ruby and ruby on rails you can take a python based tech stack where you can use python with flask you can use python django you can use java's frameworks like spring you can use php you can use javascript a lot of things you can use right how you should choose it so there is a website called as stackshare.io i generally use it a lot and i recommend my students also to use it a lot on stackshare.io you can generally compare in between frameworks and languages and you can get a better gist around what type of framework suits your work well if you are a beginner then i would highly recommend you guys to either start with a python based framework or a javascript based framework or maybe a ruby based framework right if one shot like if you want one single answer i would say start with a, a, any javascript based framework so on the server side you have node js as the runtime of javascript and for node js there are frameworks like express js 
so you can start with it so express is a very light and uh, min minimalistic kind of a framework it is not having a lot of opinions so it's not convention based so you can like start building basic servers there so first of all you need to learn that basic language if you don't know about a lot of javascript you need to learn javascript if, if maybe you chose python then you can choose uh, uh, to learn python how you can learn python there are a lot of free resources on freecodecamp.org you can go and watch the tutorials of basics of node.js basics of ruby basics of python and start learning these languages as soon as you are having good grip on the language then i would highly recommend you guys to actually start building something so just see any project or see any problem that you want to solve maybe if you don't if you are not able to think of any problem just take any sample application maybe a netflix clone or maybe a udemy clone something like that just pick this and start building something and then you will be able to realize the fact that how you can build a basic server now you know about the client server architecture now this is the part where you will be building actual server try to build an actual server try to make request to that server and see how response comes just set up the basic boilerplate the basic skeleton of our server this is going to be a big achievement trust me like when i started learning web development and backend development it took me around 3 to 4 days to just realize that how to even set up a server if you are able to do so then it's going to be a really big achievement so i would highly recommend you guys to go through uh, stackshare.io choose your tech stack start learning it it will take some time to take take like one or two weeks in order to get a hands on around the whole tech stack but as soon as you are done with it you will be able to set up your basic server on the back end try to make request try to see how response comes so on and so forth just basic hello world basic server is also going to be fair enough so this is going to be the part where you can learn about the tech stack so as soon as you are able to set up your basic server you need to learn about what is an mvc architecture mvc is an architecture that is generally used in most of the web applications you need to learn about what is a controller what is the use of a controller what is a model what is the use of a model you don't need to concern yourself a lot with a lot of views but it's still it's good to know how exactly mvc works right you need to see that when you uh, produce a route how exactly it interacts with the controller when you need to pass on the call to the model when you need to don't pass the call to the model all of these things you need to learn right as soon as you are done with this like basic mvc try to set up basic routes try to set up different routes try to set up some basic rest based routes and see how exactly your uh, requests are going based on the different kind of routes you need to uh like pass data to your request in different manners maybe you need to pass your data in the request body or in the url params learn about all of these concepts how you can send data to the server when when i say sending request that means you want to send some data to the uh, to the uh, corresponding server so learn about how you can give data to the server so that that server can process it and see how exactly controller can interact with the model can how can you have a controller based layer how can you have a model layer so on and so forth right as soon as you are comfortable with these basics try to learn about the fact that uh, how exactly models are going to interact with databases now here comes a very important part of database management system i would highly recommend you to start with an rdbms database maybe mysql or maybe pg sql uh, you need to learn about how exactly databases work you need to learn how to write queries how to optimize those queries what is normalization all of these concepts you need to learn and then you need to see that how you can like integrate a mysql database with your server so that the server can store data on the mysql database because obviously on back end you want to to have the data persistence right so this is something that is going to be really very important and this is the point where you should integrate your models with the database and then you will be able to uh, complete the whole request life cycle that from the client side you are sending a request to the server it is getting uh, accumulated on the con controller controller is going to send it to the corresponding model if required then model is going to interact with the database layer database is going to give you a response on the model you apply some business logic on the model and then give the response to the control which in turn uh, segregates all the data objects and uh, uh, creates a final response object and give it back to the client so this whole life cycle is going to be completed and this is going to be definitely a major milestone in the journey of backend development now one more thing that i would highly recommend you guys to learn is linux fundamentals so like being someone who is going to interact with the server side you should understand the fact that you are not going to have a lot of uh, i would say gui interfaces when you are going to deploy your servers to the production right so in that case you are going to interact with only cli interfaces and generally these cli interfaces are going to be a linux environment so i would highly recommend to at least learn basic uh, linux commands learn how to use vim a text editor directly available on the terminal so how to use vim or maybe nano how to copy files here and there what are the basic commands how you can change permissions of a file so on and so like basic uh, linux terminal commands is something that you should learn right apart from that whatever tech stack you are learning uh, try to learn about the fact that how you can 
run files in those text tag directly from the command line so a lot of people have a notion that they use some ides and then ides do a lot of things for them but i would say sometimes at least try to avoid it at least in your initial days in your initial days try to do more things to through command line right this is going to give you a better gist around the overall things that is going to be done in the backend development now irrespective of the fact whether you are a backend developer or a frontend developer you need to learn about the fact that how version control works right so there are different version control system like git mercurian etc you can start with git you can see how version control works why do you even need it you can start building a team project if some fellow mates of you are also learning backend along with you you can start building a team project you can see how teams interact with it uh, how how to create branches what's a master branch how to write cleaner code how to push your code uh, to some online i would say services like github or gitlab all of these things you need to learn and again for this one also i would highly recommend you to use cli interfaces not the gui interface like uh, github desktop or something because they abstract a lot of details and on the server side you are not going to have a lot of gui so it's highly recommended for you to use a cli interface so that you can get the gist of exactly how step by step things are working so version control system is going to be very important how you can learn version control system there are some awesome tutorials from free code camp as well as from mit and stanford i link them in the description you can definitely watch them and start your journey with the version control systems now in back end development sometimes you need to uh, prepare tasks that are not going to be executed then and there for example sometimes there are services which are which are sending you mails at 10 am in the morning and this is done every day so what do you think is someone sitting somewhere in the back end and pressing a button every day on the 10 am in the morning and giving you some mails or push notifications no so these are automated tasks but these tasks are going to be executed in the future so there are a lot of concepts around queuing so there are a lot of queues that you need to set up so that they can aggregate the request and then later you can process the request right you need to learn about concepts like cron jobs so these are jobs which are going to run a service every day like based on whenever you want like every in every year every month every day every hour every second like whatever uh, configuration you want to do you can set up the cron jobs apart from that sometimes there are a lot of case scenarios where you want to serve a like a piece of data which is requested by n number of like many users in that case you need to learn about concepts of caching so you need to set learn how you can set up basic cache if you know how to set up basic redis cache that is going to definitely work for you like redis is something that is going to give you caching functionalities also and queuing functionalities also so redis is something definitely you can use you can read the documentation of redis i'll link those in the description section definitely do check it out and one should know how to set up an overall environment and the overall server of redis now as soon as you know about how to make a basic backend application you need to learn about the fact that how you can deploy an application like whatever tech stack you are using based on that tech stack you can deploy your application on cloud services so there are a lot of services like google cloud aws microsoft azure digital ocean etc etc you can pick any one of them uh, when i was learning i picked up aws you can pick any one of those you can pick some free student uh, licenses and free student tiers in order to deploy your app now as soon as you will deploy your app in production you will get a feeling of how exactly production environment was because currently you were building everything on your local machine and things in production are quite different you need to do a lot of configuration you need to set up everything again in production so this is something is going that is going to give you a very good experience as soon as you have you are able to deploy your app in the production try to integrate uh, instead of http and https uh, request that is try to integrate ssl certificates in your website or like overall web architecture because this is going to make your overall architecture secure apart from that there are a lot of things that you need to do while writing the backend so that you can maintain the security of the application so you can uh, like write uh, proper queries so that you can avoid sql injection And, and a lot of attacks are like these that can be avoided by writing proper code in the backend. So uh, you can also put request filters if some DDoS attacks come. So there can be request rate limiter and request filters that you can you, you should learn how to set up. And these basic things one should know in order to uh, become a good backend developer. I think. Now the next major uh, lab that you need to take is to learn how to build APIs. now you know end to end how to build a basic server how to make a request take a response deploy that server maintain some security now you need to learn about the fact that how exactly products are working how uh, the overall rest api architectures work now just think about it the same uber front end is have you are having on the ios android and the web all of them are using same functionality so definitely there is a mechanism in which you are able to interact with all of your applications simultaneously and api based architectures are really good for this 
right? So you need to learn about the fact that how you can build REST APIs, what are the conventions of building a REST API, how you can write cleaner APIs, right? How you can maintain authorization and authentication on your APIs. This is something that you need to learn. Authentication is a very important part. You need to learn about the fact that how you can set up basic JWT token based authentication, how you can uh, set up OmniAuth based authentication. When I say OmniAuth, then I mean Google, Facebook sign up based uh, authentication. All of these things you need to learn how you can integrate in your API. You need to set up authorization in your API where different roles are going to have different access to the APIs. All of these things you need to learn. As soon as you will get better around writing APIs, you will become, I would say, a much enhanced backend developer because writing APIs is, is a skill in itself. So I can, I will link some good Medium articles that will tell you about how to write basic good APIs, how to set up good response objects in your REST APIs. And these are articles that I also read. So I would highly recommend you guys also to read these articles. Now, after that, you need to learn about how you can build basic features like Pagination. So pagination can be there on web, Android, iOS, everywhere, right? But the functionality on the backend is same. So you need to learn about how you can make things like pagination, how you can make filtration, like filtering APIs that someone has some filter, like on flipkart.com, you have a filter of uh, price, you have a filter of rating, how you can implement those in the backend logic. Try to learn about how you can make up, uh, upload service that can upload maybe images that can upload files, so on and so forth. Learn about how you can make a better uploader instead of uploading directly on the server, you can use some third party services like AWS S3 to upload, uh, I would say, uh, these these uh, static data to these services, which are like storage, uh, blob storage services, and they are going to return your link. You can store those links in your database. All of these things you should learn. You should learn about uh, how you can, uh, as I said, make an uploader service, how you can make an authentication service. This is something that you need to learn, right? How you can make complex, I would say database relations. That is also something that you need to learn. Like I would highly recommend you to make a basic Twitter based app so that you can integrate features like follow, like, unlike, all of these features because these are going to take up a really good challenge in order to build a basic uh, database setup because they require a lot of normalizations, uh, uh, normalization concepts. So these are something these are some miscellaneous features that everyone should try to integrate try to make sure that you have you are you know how to send mails right everything these are features that you see in a general basic website you should know how to integrate that right so these are going to be my suggestions of how and in which order you should learn uh, in order to become a backend better backend developer so I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. These all the things that I mentioned were like my opinion. These were the things that I learned in an order. I started learning backend development with Ruby on Rails and uh, ExpressJS. So I would highly recommend you can also try that as well. All of these things you should try. Development is something that is not going to be a one or two day task. It is going to be something that is going to take a much longer run. You need to be consistent. You need to try to build, have a builder based attitude, right? You are an engineer, you should have a builder attitude. And if you are having that builder attitude, you are going to become a very, very good developer. All of these things are going to be enough for becoming, uh, I would say, junior developer or I would say an SD1 or two. For being an SD2, you need to learn some extra concepts like system design, which includes high level design and low level design. But in order to get started with your career, these all these things are going to be sufficient enough, right? So I hope that you guys enjoyed the video. If yes, then don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and hit that bell icon so that you can get a notification whenever I'm going to put a new video on the channel. Till then, take care guys. Bye-bye. Have a great week ahead and love you all.